This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. When looking to buy a new MacBook, the $1,300 13-inch base MacBook Pro is by far the best value, offering excellent performance per dollar compared to the rest of Apple's MacBooks. But what if you need something a little bit more powerful and you're not afraid to spend some extra cash? Of course, there's the $1,800 13-inch MacBook Pro, which bumps you up to a more powerful quad-core processor, graphics, and SSD speed, as well as getting you a couple of extra Thunderbolt 3 ports. It sounds like a good deal for what you get, but seeing as Apple's brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro is now available, you might actually be making a huge mistake by going with a 13-inch model. So in this video, we're gonna compare the performance, specs, and features of the high-end 13-inch MacBook Pro for $1,800, to the base model 16-inch MacBook Pro for $2,400 to see which one is the better value. First off, the 16-inch already comes with higher specs at the base price, like 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, while the $1,800 model comes with only 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD. So if you match those specs, it brings the price of the 13-inch to $2,200, only $200 off the price of the 16-inch. And that's with the quad-core i5 processor on the 13-inch instead of a 6-core i7 on the 16-inch Pro. And our 13-inch model actually has 16 gigabytes of RAM, since most people looking at the high-end definitely don't want to be limited by only 8 gigabytes of RAM. Now before we compare the performance of both machines, let's compare some of the feature differences between both of them. The display quality on each model is basically the same, with the same color accuracy, brightness, and pixels per inch, but the 16-inch actually has thinner bezels, which look quite a bit nicer and more modern. The 16-inch also has the updated scissor mechanism keyboard, which honestly is worlds better than the butterfly keyboard on the 13-inch Pro. It's got a lot more key travel and features a physical escape key, so the keyboard by itself may push a lot of people to choose the 16-inch instead. And for those who like large trackpads, the one on the 16-inch is larger as well. And when it comes to speaker quality, the 16-inch destroys the speakers on the 13-inch. Just hear it for yourself. And finally, the microphone quality is quite a bit better on the 16-inch Pro as well. This is a microphone quality test with the $1,800 13-inch MacBook Pro. This is a microphone sound quality test with the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. The only downside of the larger model is portability. It's quite a bit larger than the 13-inch MacBooks, and 4.3 pounds instead of 3 pounds on the smaller Pro so it's not going to be as easy to carry around. But the benefit is, of course, the larger display, since the 13-inch Pro's display is simply too small for a lot of people out there, including myself. So even before considering performance differences, the 16-inch already seems like a better deal for all of those extra feature improvements that you get. Now before we get into comparing performance, let me tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. I built an engaging website for my wife's cleaning business with literally no web making experience. You just choose a template, customize blocks of text and images, and easily move them around. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and it's been running flawlessly for almost two years, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. So whether you're making a website for a small business or for literally anything else, Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and use our custom link below when you're ready to launch to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Starting performance testing with Geekbench 5's raw CPU power test, the base 16-inch Pro is 34% faster, which is a decent jump in performance for the extra cash. In the more realistic Cinebench R20 stress test, the 16-inch Pro was 51% faster, so that means the better cooling system and cores allow the processor to run even faster than the 13-inch model. We then tested graphics performance in Geekbench's metal test, and here we saw a massive difference, with the 16-inch Pro being about three times faster, which is due to the fact that you actually get a dedicated graphics chip, and it's AMD's latest and greatest Navi 7 nanometer graphics as well. To test gaming performance, we ran Unigen's Heaven benchmark on the Extreme preset, and the 16-inch Pro got over four times the FPS. 
That's a massive improvement for the relatively small price jump. And we actually tested gaming performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So if you want to see that video, click the button at the end of this one. We then tested GFX Bench 5.0, and the 16-inch got over triple the FPS in the Aztec test, and over five times the FPS in the Manhattan test. So there definitely is a huge difference in graphics performance. Now before we get into the real world video editing tests, we also tested the speeds of the SSD storage. And since the 16 inch comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD, instead of only 256 gigs with a 13 inch, we got over double the writing speed. And for read speeds, the 16 inch got over 300 megabytes per second more than the 13 inch. So that's another nice bonus you get by going with the 16 inch model. Let's start out Final Cut Pro 10 video editing tests with a graphically demanding Bruce X test. And here, the 16 inch Pro finished over three times faster than the 13 inch Pro. Stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip took only seven and a half seconds on the larger model compared to 33 seconds on the 13. That extra time can easily add up if you're stabilizing multiple clips. We ran that same test except with a 30 second C200 raw clip and the 13 inch took over five times as long to stabilize a clip. Now moving on to exporting a five minute 4K H.264 clip with added effects, which is the format that most YouTubers shoot and edit, the 13 inch Pro took over three times as long to finish the export. And as for the actual editing part, the clip in the timeline didn't play back at the full 30 frames per second, so it wasn't a perfectly smooth editing experience either. Now moving on to some heavier duty file formats, like exporting a 5 minute 4.5k red raw clip, the 13 inch Pro took 37 minutes to export, almost 4 times slower than the 16 inch Pro. And then in an even more extreme test, the 60p C200 raw 5 minute export, the 13 inch Pro took over 5 times as long, a full hour and 14 minutes, compared to just 14 minutes with the 16 inch Pro. And you can easily see the difference during playback. The 16 inch plays it at almost the full 60 frames per second, so it's actually bearable to edit, compared to the stuttery 13 inch Pro's performance. Not only that, but you can easily see how much more screen space you get for editing on the larger model. So the 16 inch Pro is the obvious choice for video editors. From all these tests and benchmarks, we can see that the new 16 inch MacBook Pro blows the 13 inch Pro away in terms of performance. So after seeing all of that, there are only two downsides to the 16 inch Pro. The higher base price of $2,400 and the larger size, which leads to worse portability. To be honest, the performance is so much better that I would personally suck it up and live with carrying around the larger model, especially considering the much better speakers and larger display. And as for the price, if there's no way that you can stretch your budget enough to get the 16 inch Pro, I would honestly just buy the base $1,300 13 inch MacBook Pro because it's not that much slower than the $1,800 13 inch model, as you guys saw in our which MacBook to buy video that I'll link to at the end of this video. And finally, there's just one more option if you want more performance, but don't want to spend the extra cash on the 16 inch Pro. Apple is rumored to be releasing a new updated 14 inch MacBook Pro sometime in 2020. So if you can wait that long, that's a great choice as well. If you enjoyed this comparison, make sure to tap that like button and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. And check out those two videos that I mentioned over there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.